In this video tutorial, we're going to be showing you how to conquer blend modes. Hey there, Michael Wolshinovich here from Retouching Academy. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash retouchingacademy and also at retouchingacademy.com. So in this video, I'm going to be taking you through some of the blend modes that Photoshop offers. And rather than go into scientific detail about, you know, what each of them does and how they really work, we're going to look at it from a more practical standpoint and look at the situations where you would use each of them. Now, while it's good to understand the theory behind each of the blend modes, really what blend modes tend to boil down to is having an idea of where you want to begin and what you're trying to achieve, and then playing around with various blend modes that you think will get you that result ultimately until it looks good. So that's really our goal here today is to show you various scenarios where you'll use certain classes of blend modes and then let you experiment from there. So let's go ahead and get started. So the blend modes themselves break down into a couple of different groupings. Uh, the top ones here are our darkening blend modes. Below that we have lightening blend modes. Below that one we have what I like to call the contrasting blend modes. Then we have the not so useful blend modes which essentially are, are very rarely used in um, any sort of photo retouching. Uh, difference is sometimes useful if you're aligning two layers together, uh, but other than that, I don't really ever use these. And then I'm down at the bottom here, we have our color-based blend modes. So let's go ahead and get started with our darkening blend modes here. And if we just grab this layer and enable it, we see that we've got just a standard black to white gradient. Now, if we select the darken blend mode here, essentially what's going to happen is any pixels that are darker in this top layer than the pixels below, that's essentially what's going to be displayed. So as you can see here, the black that we have on this side is essentially fully covering the image below it. And then anything in the middle here, it's still pretty much covering most parts of it. As we can see here, the shirt is completely covered with that gradient, parts of the face here. But then as we work our way down to the end, obviously the white color has no effect because everything below white is darker than white. So this side of the photo is essentially unaffected by that blend mode. Now, if we were to change this to the multiply blend mode, we see that we're still darkening, but we're doing it in a much more natural and useful way. Essentially what it does under multiply is it takes the pixel value of our top layer and multiplies it by the layer below. So we actually sort of retain the original image that we have, but everything is darkened down. The exception of course is anything that is a white pixel in our layer, because obviously white has no effect under any of the darkening blend modes. So as we can see here again, down at the end where we have pure white, uh, there's really no effect from that blend mode. Now where darken itself becomes quite useful is in the case of flyaways. So if we were to go ahead and change this blend mode to darken, and we just zoom in here, and we want to remove some of these flyaways, what we can essentially do is grab our clone stamp tool, sample from below, and just go over that. Now the nice thing is that if I were to actually sample here and start painting, uh, you can see that I'm never going to accidentally lighten and introduce new flyaways because I've set that dark and blend mode. If I go back to normal, we see that that little mistake I made up there actually will show up. Obviously, if you were uh, shooting a dark haired model on a light background, you're going to use one of the lightning blend modes, which is actually the light and blend mode. And we'll come back to that. Another use for the multiply blend mode is uh, when using textures. So if I wanted to apply a texture to this image, if I enable this here, let's just go ahead and start off with a normal blend mode. We see that we have a texture that has a lot of white. So essentially it's a light texture with a couple of black spots or dark spots on it. I've just really quickly gone over and masked out some parts of the model so that it doesn't show up there. But obviously this really is not the effect that we're after. So what we can do here is go down to again multiply and what it will do is anything that is darker than white, it will darken down the image. So those spots within our texture really start to show up within our background. So essentially anytime you have a texture where you have dark uh, spots that you want to have show through, you're going to be using the multiply blend mode and essentially it's going to smoothly and naturally blend the texture itself with the underlying image. The final uh, use for darken is uh, in the case of sharpening. So when you're sharpening your layer, usually what you'll do is you'll create a duplicate layer and you'll sharpen on that layer. Ultimately what sharpening does is it creates contrast by taking the edges and you know making one side of the edge lighter and the other edge darker. And that essentially just creates more contrast in areas of transition. Sometimes what works is if you find that the effect doesn't look good, maybe you have too much fringing because of the lighter portion, what you can do is you can blend your 
sharpening layer with a dark and blend mode and essentially all it does is it increases the darks but leaves the light pieces the same thus reducing any sort of fringing that might happen in various areas so that's pretty much it for the darkening blend modes let's go ahead and move over to the lightening side of things so with these lightning ones we've got a couple of different samples here and essentially that's let's just turn this on here so we're looking at these ones here, the light and screen, color dodge, linear dodge. Um, just kind of going back to some of these, by the way, the color burn, linear burn, and darker color, not terribly useful, very rarely used. So that's the reason why I didn't cover them. So you're pretty much going to be focusing on darken and multiply with the darkening ones. So now with the lightning ones, essentially um, here, let's imagine that we have some sort of a bokeh um, texture that we want to apply to our image. Again, we see that the bokeh in this case is photographed on a dark background, and that's usually going to be the case because you're going to have lights photographed at night. So what we want to do is essentially exclude any of this darkening section here and just use the lighter portions. Now again, we can sort of select the lightning blend mode here, which um, essentially is the same as the darkening blend mode in that it naively selects any pixel values that are lighter on the current layer than the layer below and just renders those. So as we can see here, there's no blending between uh, the image below and our, or I should say the layer below and the layer above. It's really just a straight pixel replacement. On the other hand, if we go into screen blend mode, we're kind of doing the same thing that we were doing with multiply in that we're actually multiplying pixel values together. Obviously in this case, it's always going to lighten your image. So essentially anything that is not black in this image here will make it lighter. If you had a solid black layer and you blended it with screen, it would do nothing. But anything lighter than black will actually lighten your image. And so that's essentially what we're getting here. And again, a really nice um, blend mode to use for textures. Similarly, if we have something like this, where we have smoke. So this layer here looks like this is essentially smoke photographed on a black background. The natural instincts for you should always be if you have something that's dark and you want to render the light piece of it, always blend with one of the lightning blend modes. And again, in this case, that's going to be screen. So as we can see with screen, the black has no effect whatsoever. It essentially completely disappears. And then the white smoke actually blends in naturally with our image. So as you can see, if we move this anywhere, you know, it's still showing the, uh, the image below it, but bringing in the smoke component. The last um, use for some of these is, for example, something like the uh, color dodge or linear dodge add blend mode. So with this one here, we have a layer that essentially is just color. So I've just painted in a little bit of color onto her hair. In this case, I think I used like an orange color. So let's just go ahead and grab something like that. Let's just grab red, make it really funky. So I'm going to put a streak in there. Let me lower the opacity down. So essentially I've got a spot of red there. Now, if we actually want to blend that uh, in a more pleasing way, we can go into one of these here. So if we go color dodge, as you can see, if we start putting this in, it's really just lightening the hair quite a bit, but introducing that color as well. So generally where these color dodge and linear dodge blend modes uh, work really well is if you need to paint in highlights within, you know, areas of mid-tone or shadow. So you can imagine if you had, you know, a desert where you wanted to highlight some of the areas within a dune, um, you would use something like color dodge or linear dodge and paint in some orange light in there and that would blend nicely. If we compare it to linear dodge, we see that linear dodge is essentially a much more dramatic version of that. So uh, if you want to really emphasize that effect, uh, use linear dodge over color dodge, but always remember that with linear dodge, you have to paint with a fairly dark color. So we could pick a really dark red here and start painting. And we see that that effect still comes through. So you never really want to use a light color there. Otherwise it will look pretty silly. Now, again, with the lightning, uh, as I mentioned, if you have a dark model or a dark haired model on a light background, you can use the light and blend mode with clone stamp tool to remove flyaways. And the same thing applies also with um, with the uh, sharpening in that if you want to just retain the lightning effect of the sharpening you can blend your layer with a blend mode like you just grab this layer here you can blend it with lighten in which case it will take only half of the sharpening effect and another thing that you can do is start combining screen with something like the black and white uh, adjustment layer here so if we grab black and white and we actually blend it with screen, what you'll see is it starts to lighten parts of your image. So we can take that down and we can see that we can 
control which areas get lightened. And this is actually a really similar effect that you can achieve using the darkening blend mode. So let me actually just jump back there for one second. Let's delete this black and white layer. We're going to go into our darkening section and we're going to grab our black and white adjustment layer. And this is something that um, I often actually use for toning my images. And so if we grab our multiply blend mode, we see that it goes from black and white into a colored image. And then as we control the sliders here, we can control how much those are darkened. Obviously, you know, if we take yellow way down, then yellows are going to end up very dark. If we take it up here, then the yellows are going to come through a little bit more. We can then adjust down our opacity. And as you can see, we create this much more moody effect. So you can do the same thing with screen, but obviously it's going to have the opposite effect in that it's going to brighten your image. So the more common scenario really is to use it with a multiply blend mode. Moving on now to our contrasting blend modes. If we go into here, um, the contrasting blend modes are essentially all of these here. So we have overlay, soft light, uh, hard light, vivid light. These are very useful and essentially you'll be using them all the time. The most common scenario for using something like overlay or soft light is for dodging and burning. So a couple of different ways to do dodging and burning. I'm not going to cover that in detail here, but essentially the idea with these contrasting blend modes is that anything that is um, lighter than middle gray or essentially 50% gray will lighten your image and anything that is darker than 50% gray will darken your image. So if we have um, our blend mode set to overlay and we have this 50% gray layer, if I take for example, color of white, and I start painting in here, as you can see, it's going to start lightening that area because essentially I'm now making that portion of it lighter than 50% gray. If we go the other way and we go with a black color and we start painting in, we can see that it's going to start darkening that area. So again, it has the inverse effect. So anything darker than 50% gray darkens, anything lighter than 50% gray lightens. And so that's just one of the ways of doing dodging and burning, having a 50% layer and lightening or darkening selective areas. Another common scenario or a common use for these blend modes is if you're doing frequency separation. Again, not going to cover that technique, but the idea is that you split an image into the high frequency and low frequency information, and you're going to be using a blend mode of linear light. Now, these linear light and vivid light blend modes um, are really useful whenever you have something like a high pass, for example. So if we were to grab our image down here, create a duplicate of it with command J, go into filter, other high pass. Let's go ahead and grab a radius of around 10 pixels. Okay. And now, obviously this looks terrible right now, but a couple of things that you'll notice is that first of all, whenever you create a high pass, it creates a 50% gray layer and then it has darker and lighter components. The darker components are going to be um, the fine shadow areas and the lighter components are going to be the fine highlight areas. So if we take this and we blend it with one of these blend modes, we're actually going to get back to an image that actually looks like a photo. So if we select overlay and we zoom in a little bit here and we toggle on and off, we see that it creates this really sort of sharpened grungy effect. And that's, you know, often used in images that have like composites with HDR and things like that. If you want to create a grungy feel, that's obviously where you're going to be using that. And we can essentially try this out with any of these blend modes here. So soft light, for example, will create a, a softer effect than overlay. So essentially you can always remember that soft light is a toned down version of overlay. We mentioned also before we had the dodging and burning, you can also do your dodging and burning on a soft light layer, depending on how um, dramatic you want that buildup to be. Hard light, I don't often use. Uh, vivid light and linear light are often used in combination with um, high pass adjustments. So if we were to select vivid light here, you'll see that it's going to create a really dramatic effect. Now, obviously we're going to, if we were ever use that, we would take down our opacity to something that looks good. But as you can see, it works very well. And in general, if you're using vivid light or linear light, you'll want to go with a low radius on your high pass. So in and around um, one to three pixels, depending of course on the resolution of your image. Similarly to what we talked about before, you can also go in here and let's go ahead and create another black and white adjustment layer. We can blend this black and white adjustment layer with any of those options here. So uh, typically we'll be using overlay or soft light in this case. If we use overlay, then essentially we can see that 
unlike the multiply or lighten, we're adding contrast um, to the image. Because with multiply, we're always going to be darkening it. With screen on a black and white, we're always going to be lightening it. Now we're going to be lightening and darkening and building up contrast. So again, here we can control the amount of that contrast that's added into each color. And then ultimately kind of get to an effect that we like. Lower down our opacity. And if we toggle on and off, we see that again, we just have a more contrasted image. Moving on now to our color based blend modes. There's a couple of different uses for these. Now, uh, the most common ones that you'll be seeing are if you want to uh, colorize your image. So essentially, we have a solid layer over here that I filled with a sort of orangey pinkish kind of tone. Now, if I enable that, essentially, we just have that solid color in our image, which obviously not what we want. Now, using any of these here, um, really not the effect we're after, like light and screen, you know, it doesn't really give us a very good result. You know, multiply makes it really orangey. So what we really want to do is use some of these down here. And for example, select color. And what color will do is essentially what will colorize the entire image with that color. Now, obviously, that's still not looking great. So we're going to lower down our opacity. And now, as you can see, we just gently added a little bit of an orange color cast to our image. So that's obviously a common use for it. Another um, use for some of these blend modes is if we have a curves adjustment, if we actually enable this, we see that this is a pretty drastic curve. So we've really darkened down our image. One thing that, of course, happens when you darken an image is you're adding saturation. If you lighten an image, you're taking away saturation. So sometimes what we want to do, and this is often the case when you're doing dodging and burning with curves adjustments, um, you want to kind of negate that effect on saturation. And you can do that by going into here and selecting luminosity only. And then essentially what that's going to do is it's going to just darken the tone itself. So essentially if you've got an orange color, it's going to give you a darker orange color, but it's not going to give you a more saturated orange color. Now, obviously, it's up to you to decide which effect you want. I mean, this can be useful as well. Sometimes you do want to increase the saturation at the same time, in which case you leave it in normal blend mode. But if you want to negate that, then obviously um, luminosity is the one you want to select. Now, obviously, hue and saturation, they're just as their names explain, um, it will take either just the hue value uh, within that layer and apply it to your image. And saturation will take just the saturation value. Saturation is not something I use very often, but hue can be useful if you want to just apply a particular hue to your image. So that's pretty much it as far as the blend modes go. I hope that uh, was helpful to you in seeing some of the different scenarios that you'll be uh, encountering and then how to handle them using blend modes. So until next time, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel below and also visit us at retouchingacademy.com for more written articles and tutorials. Bye for now.